Well, hi there. I would say that snakes fall into one of three awesomeness categories. They are either awesome, spectacularly awesome, or whoa. Would you look at that? Most snakes fall into the first category and are appreciated only by snake people. The second is for snakes that are beautiful, enormous, or dangerous, and are appreciated by most people. But whoa, would you look at that, is for snakes like this, the Asian vine snake, the dragon snake, and just a few others that even people that don't like snakes can't help but stare at an awesome wonder. Because this snake is simply beautiful and unusual and fascinating. It lives its life as a vine. Because when you're a noodle with a head, the world is a scary place. But when you're just a vine, there's much less to fear. And if anybody notices that you are, in reality, a noggin noodle and not a vine, well, then you can become a very grumpy, judgmental shoelace. They can puff out their throats, expand their bodies to display the black and white bands on their skin between their scales, and open their mouths exposing their very scary fangs and such. Because this is a venomous snake. Now, some people hear this and assume that venom means it is dangerous. Their venom is very scary if you are a little lizard, but if you are, say, a human, then it isn't something to worry about. Of course, that doesn't mean that it won't make them illegal to keep in some places. But if you can legally obtain one, is this spectacularly cool snake, the Asian vine snake, a good pet? Or does it have a fatal flaw, like the dragon snakes? And is the Asian vine snake the best pet reptile for you? To figure this out, we will need to judge the judgmental shoelace based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Asian vine snake a score of 3 out of 5. And this may seem high for a venomous snake, and it is. The thing is that the venom, as we said before, is not really a big deal. In fact, it's only going to cause a little bit of swelling unless you have some sort of a major allergic reaction. So the venom isn't any more of a concern than that of a tarantula, like a rose hair or a Mexican red knee, which are some of the most handleable tarantulas in the world. That said, they generally don't seem to enjoy being handled. These actually look a little bit like emerald tree skinks, um, but they don't have the emerald tree skink personality. Honestly, I think they look like the tail of an emerald tree monitor uh, with a funny little pointy head on it. Like I said before, they do have a very conspicuous defensive display, so they are great at communicating their feelings regarding your interactions. In general, they put up with handling rather well when it is necessary, but if you want a snake that you can handle more frequently or for longer periods of time, there are a lot of better options like corn snakes, ball pythons, boas, really most of the common pet snakes. They can be handled, obviously. They aren't dangerous to you, but it isn't one of the best snakes to handle. And that's a bit of a bummer because handling snakes is generally one of the best parts about having a snake. That said, these guys are beautiful, active, and more fun to watch in the enclosure than most snakes. They're a bit more like having an anole than having a corn snake. And that's very interesting, because if you get one of these, you are probably going to be buying a lot of anoles. And out of respect for this Asian vine snake, which comes to us from Prime Pets in Spanish Fork, Utah, which is a brand new pet store right here, near where we film at Clint's Reptile Room, and, and with whom, you know, we, we just spoke and, and have kind of established a new friendship, and hopefully we'll be able to share a lot of their cool animals in the future. But I'm going to let this guy, who is notorious for, for being good about handling, I'm going to let him hang out on this plant instead of me for the rest of this video, because while he's very good about being handled, I don't want to abuse him. Oh, you're so cool. Look at that. You do that. I'd like to pause for just a moment because I need to put my Carbon Ridge wallet head to head against Jason's Titanium Ridge wallet to figure out which one would be the best Ridge wallet for you. And that's going to come down to our three head to head categories, which are awesomeness, expensiveness, and difficulty. When it comes to awesomeness, both of these wallets are pretty darn awesome. 
I personally picked the carbon wallet because I often carry it in my pocket with other things and I didn't want my wallet to get scratched up or for it to scratch up other things and it never has. No scratches on the wallet, no scratches on anything else. Love it. Jason, he went with the titanium. It looks super cool and I really like this texture on it because it actually wears really nicely as well. But I think that this outer coating is so tough that it's not gonna get scratched up. But if you keep it in your pocket with, you know, maybe like your phone, maybe just keep them in separate pockets. When it comes to expensiveness, I don't know which one of these wallets costs more. You'll have to check that out on their website. When it comes to difficulty, I've got good news. You can order either of these right now, no problem. They'll ship it right to your door. And if you use our coupon code down in the description, you'll even save a little money. When it comes to care, we give the Asian fine snake a score of three out of five. Oftentimes when you see Asian vine snakes on display somewhere, they're being cohabitated with anoles or house geckos or other small lizards. And that's cool because anoles and house geckos are also super cool animals. When I worked at Disney's Animal Kingdom, people often would ask me how we kept the meerkats from attacking the rabbits that were often present in their enclosure. I could only respond with a nervous grin and some wide shifty eyes. Now we didn't put those rabbits in there, but as it turns out, every now and then, a rabbit would make a wrong turn and we would get to have a very interesting discussion with the wide-eyed children that had just witnessed their first predation event. And unfortunately, that's the reason that those lizards are in there. For me, eats lizards has always been a deal breaker when it comes to keeping a pet. That's the main reason that I don't have a Burton's legless lizard, for example. I mean, a legless gecko? Why would anyone not want one of those? Ah, lizard eater. But I also recognize that I don't have a logical reason that feeding invasive lizards to an animal is unacceptable, but rodents are fine. Rats are amazing animals. Anyway, this is a deal breaker for me, but I'm not letting that influence the score. Invasive lizards are widely available for sale at not wholly unreasonable prices. But be aware that wild-caught lizards, which most feeder lizards are, are likely to come loaded with parasites that your snake can potentially receive from them. Vine snakes lose points for care mostly because their care is a little tricky and complicated, especially if they're imports, and most of them are. That said, if you want the odds to be ever in your favor, then get one that is captive bred. Imports will have issues with parasites, stress, dehydration, starvation. They may be difficult to get eating. And of course, they're being taken from the wild, which threatens their wild population. Getting one captive bred fixes mm, all of that. And they're available captive bred at reasonable prices. Before you get one, however, you will want to set up an enclosure. I would recommend giving them at least 36 inches of both length and height. These snakes are going to move through the bushes and trees, so set up an enclosure like that. If the enclosure is too small, they tend to bend their silly little snoots, and you don't want that. I know that Zoomed and Exoterra have glass tanks of the dimensions that I listed before, and other companies like Zen Habitats and Toad Ranch have PVC enclosures that would work great. You're probably going to want to cover most of the lid of any of these tanks with glass or acrylic because you need to keep the humidity super high. Elevated water bowls can be a good idea because they don't like to go down to the ground even to drink, and these guys can become dehydrated very quickly. Make sure there is adequate ventilation, which can be tough in dry environments like we have here, because you need to keep the humidity, like I said, very high, very high, up to 100% high. Use a substrate that can hold some serious humidity without molding. Cypress and sphagnum moss can be great options. No hides should be needed because they don't get on the ground and go down into holes like a lot of snakes will, but they need lots of climbing branches that won't mold and greenery in which they can hide. That would also be fantastic. Snakes are generally not good candidates for bioactive setups, mostly because they dig things up and you know the humidity can be not right for them. These are a definite exception. Also provide UVA and UVB basking lights. If you're unfamiliar with the importance of UVB, we have a whole video about it right there. And be sure that the snake cannot escape because they're slender and athletic and they don't fare well loose in houses. 
Also, if you get an import, definitely take it to the vet in the first few weeks to have it treated for parasites. It will have them. Also, do what you can to get it hydrated and feeding regularly. If it is cohabitating well with its lizard friends, uh, remember, you have a problem. You don't want them to get along. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who make so much possible for this channel. We recently got a new piece of equipment that is going to allow us to film animals, especially in the field, from much greater distance. So I can show you things that I've always been able to see, but I haven't been able to get close enough to show you. And, and now I can, which is opening up all kinds of new possibilities for what we can do. So expect some really awesome new content in the future. Thanks to you guys. And remember, because you support us on Patreon, among many other things, you'll get to see those videos before anyone else. If you'd like to be part of that, check out our Patreon. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Asian vine snake a score of two out of five. I struggled with what score to give here. If we're talking about captive bread snakes, which are available and are absolutely the way to go, then the score is much higher. That said, that is the minority of Asian vine snakes that you will see for sale. So I kind of split the difference. If you get an import and you still have it in a year, you did things right and you got a bit lucky and I'm impressed. If you got one that is captive bred, they should do much better. I would expect you to still have it in a year. Just get that enclosure dialed in long before you get the snake. This isn't the snake to buy on an impulse. In fact, there is no snake to buy on an impulse, but this is a real bad one. When it comes to availability, we give the Asian vine snake a score of three out of five. These guys are out there. The ones to get are captive bred straight from a breeder. Those you'll find online and maybe at an expo if you happen to have a breeder in the area. Those that you will generally see at expos and pet shops are primarily imports. If possible, don't go that route. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Asian vine snake a score of three out of five. Honestly, it will be cheaper to get a captive bred snake than an import, even if you need to pay for the shipping. This is because captive bred snakes aren't that much more expensive since the breeders have to compete with imports and you won't need to take them to the vet as often, especially right at first to get them swept free of parasites and rehydrated and basically saved from the stresses of importation. Not to mention that you're less likely to need to buy multiple snakes to get one that makes it. The enclosure, while commercially available, is not super cheap. The lights won't be cheap. The furnishings shouldn't be crazy bad. Just create a bush or a tree in a big glass or PVC box. A misting system or a fogger would be a great idea. Elevated water bowls, substrate, and you're done. Oh, uh, well and a handful of lizards. And this is why, overall, we give the Asian vine snake a score of 2.8 out of 5. If what you want is a judgmental emerald tree monitor tail with the eyes of a cuttlefish eh, that eats lizards, then the Asian vine snake, I mean, it's the one. But if you want a vine snake that looks pretty much like this, but isn't so much of a lizard eater, then there is another option, which I hope to be able to cover in the near future. So, as always, like and subscribe. Be sure to click the little bell so you don't miss that video when it comes out. And we hope to see you real soon. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, this is a gecko? No. The Burton's legless lizard is a gecko. Yeah. Yes. For reals? For reals. There's no way that's a gecko. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tis, and we will be discussing it in much angry detail.